Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I have done Iron Warriors a while ago on the channel, but it was time I thought to do something a little bit different with them. Something perhaps a bit more fitting for the Horus Heresy. Now these guys are cool. They're, they're one of my favorite legions. I've just never had the, the bravery to paint an entire legion with hazard stripes all over them. But as you'll see later on, it's not too difficult. Now this fella took me about 40 minutes, and I reckon you could probably cut that down a little if you were painting more of them at a time. As I'll mention in a moment, this is really a good method for batch painting, getting out 5 or 10 figures at a time. Anyhow, all of the paints will be listed in the description below, along with the base recipe. So let's get started. So to begin with, I've primed this fella with a spray of leather brown from the Army Painter, and any medium to dark brown is going to work quite well here. I'd also suggest Fur Brown from the Army Painter, which has a really nice warm reddish tint to it. It's a great rusty colour for recesses. But that's nice and quick to do, and all we need to do now is lay down the main colour of the armour. Now there is actually a paint called Iron Warriors, but I'm going to suggest it's probably too dark for what I've got in mind as we go on. I've got instead Lead Belcher and a big old brush, and we're going to overbrush this, which is similar to dry brushing, but without taking quite so much paint off of the brush. So let's go ahead, and all I'm aiming to do is lay down the silver colour of the armour and leave a little bit of the brown in the recesses. If you cover it completely, don't worry. Now that will take you seconds, and this is why this particular technique works best if you've got five or ten guys that you want to paint at a time really will save time overall. The next stage is kind of a surprise. We're going to go straight to white. So I've got here white scar, and I'm going to very carefully try and get into the eye sockets here. If I do end up hitting the sides, which I already have, you know what, I'm just going to lean into it. Doesn't matter at all, because I've got plans for those later. It's a good thing I do have a plan, or that would probably look awful. We'll move on to retributor armor. And very quickly, just splash in some of the shoulder trim and a few little details that you want to be that brassy colour. Now this will cover absolutely wonderfully over the top of Lead Belcher. And anywhere that it doesn't, you're going to get a slightly sort of shiny, grimy brass finish in the recesses. As with all of these Heresy Era Astartes, the question of how much gold you want to apply is really up to you. The wear and the markings and all that, uh, it's pretty personal. I'm going to move on and use here Avalanche Sunset, because they're not Iron Warriors without Hazard Stripes. So I'm going to pick a couple of areas where I want that yellow. And this will cover fairly well over silver, but we are not stopping here. Once you've got a nice solid yellow, we are going to go over it with another. Now that will take two coats. So I've done the knee pad in, and I've also done, there was a really cool example of a Mark II Marine wearing this weird single painted plate. So I've gone with that, because I think that looks kind of neat. What I've got now is Flash Gets Yellow, and we're going to straight away line up and brighten this yellow. So, here we go. It is pretty bright. <laughs> now, same rules apply. Take your time here. Try and keep your brush moving in the same direction, and you will get a smoother finish. And you will likely need two coats of this. The secret of a smooth yellow finish isn't a white primer, it isn't an airbrush, it is once you have put down a brush stroke of paint, walk away. Put down the yellow and let it dry. And then, when you need to come over the back of it, put a second coat down. Don't keep going over the same area with your brush because you're going to lift up that yellow as it dries and you're going to end up with an awful bitty mess. Now we're not going to put on the hazard stripes just yet, but what I have here is black. This is from Vallejo. And the reason being is a coverage on this is, bless it, just a lot better than a bad and black. So anywhere that's going to be black, let's not overthink this, paint it black. I quite like using the black to break up some of the shape of the top of the marine, make them a little more interesting up there. As well, the little exposed bits of machinery, I've painted some of those areas black too. Some folks really don't use very much of it at all, and as you've probably heard me say about a dozen times by now, it's up to you. 
I've got now Blood Angel's red contrast, and this is where we're going to paint in the eyes. All you need to do is load up your brush and just jam it in there. And then at last, once that's dried, you can go back to your lead belcher, and we'll tidy up the rims on the edge of the eye socket there. Also at that stage you can go through and do all of your other tidy up, so any bits that you need to sharpen with a little bit of extra silver, or tidy the black with the gold, go nuts there. What I've got now is some Agrax Earthshade. Now if you're going to ask if this is the old stuff, I haven't got the new stuff, a big old brush, and let's just start jamming this all over the miniature. You can be quite generous, but it is important that you make sure you get it into all of the recesses, otherwise those bits are going to glow. Up around the face, just steer it away from his eyes a little. But yeah, once you've got your eye in, away you go. Shade the entire miniature. We'll then leave him for about half an hour, find somewhere sunny, and let's have a look at what that looks like when he is dry. Before your shade is dried, what you can also do is get into the eye sockets with a nice clean brush and just scoop out some of that shade to make sure that those are going to stay nice and bright red. And then when finally it has dried, you should have something that looks like this. And honestly, except for the stripes, that is a pretty much finished Iron Warrior. But you might notice here I am clutching the next important tool in our little experiment, and that is a B pencil. You could also use a 2B, so 2B or not 2B, that is uh, the question. But what I'm going to do is use it to very softly draw some lines across the shoulder pad, the, the, the knee pad. Because I always find it easier when I've got a guide to follow with the brush. So what you can do here is lay down the shape that you want these to be. And this is much easier, I find, than trying to do it with a brush. Now as long as you're not pushing down really hard, you're not going to scratch through the surface of the paint, which is ideal. If you're worried about that, you can lay down a little bit of a matte varnish first. It's a bit of practice there will not go amiss. We've gone back to some fresh black paint, and water this down maybe a little more than you might have done previously. What I'm going to do is now use those, ooh, those little straight lines as the guide for painting in my hazard stripes. So what I've got is a much clearer picture of where I need to go to freehand these nice and straight. Now, as much as possible I find it easiest if I maneuver the miniature so that all I'm doing is moving my brush in the same direction over and over. Try not to move your hand but instead move the brush and the miniature. Then once you've got the shape you can fill in the center nice and easy. Now they're not perfectly straight, but they are pretty straight, and easy enough to do by hand. I swear, using the pencil, you'll get a much straighter finish on shoulder pads and stuff as well, because you can eyeball a little more clearly where the brush is going to go and what shape that straight line will take on a curved surface. And yes, I am going to make that stupid Hamlet joke every time I pull out that pencil. What I have now is Liberator Gold, and we're going to highlight just a little of the brassy stuff, just use the edge of your brush and you can very quickly flick along the edges of the shoulder trim. Easy as that. Now if you feel as though you must highlight the metal, what you can do is get a nice soft dry brush. I've got here a little makeup brush and some Necron compound. And you want to leave next to nothing on your brush. All right, it's important. Dry brush the edge of your base there to see what you're leaving behind. Then lightly flick along the edges of the bolter, even the black sections, it'll look quite good. And with a nice small brush, you can get to the areas where you want to highlight without worrying about hitting the black or the gold that we've already done. So even across the face, just a little in the center there. And yeah, pick out any areas where you want a little bit more shine. Now you can be quite generous with that, and I tend to find that going over plenty of the silver will also give you a really neat dusty effect at the edges. But from here, we can go a little further. You'll probably see it lurking in the corner there. What I have, this is Light Rust from Green Stuff World. And this is supposedly a pigment uh, which doesn't need to be thinned down. But I have thinned it down because it's a little thick otherwise. 
You can use Scrag Brown to do the same thing here. Water it down until it's similar to a shade. And you'll see what I'm doing is just painting it into some of the recesses. And over some of the flat panels too, to get a little bit of rust where that would collect. Now, how much of this is as ever? Up to you. I tend to think that Space Marines are probably going to take slightly better care of their gear than this, but it looks cool. You'll notice that it looks quite, quite bright going on, but I swear as it dries, this will become a lot more subtle. Now, since doing armor chipping is quite difficult on a, you know, a bright silver marine, what I've done instead is plenty of that rust. And I love, I reckon it's easy to go overboard, but overboard is kind of how the Iron Warriors do. So I love it. I think it looks great. And like I said, Scrag Brown is a good alternative. What I'm going to do now is to hit him with a matte varnish. Ordinarily, I would recommend using a satin or something for gameplay and because it will look a little cooler in real life, but matte just looks better photographed. So use Munitorum Varnish or something similar if you've got it. I'm then going to apply his base and we'll get a look at what he looks like in a couple of seconds here. Now just really quickly, while you're dry brushing the base, you're adding those couple of colors on. Once you've got most of the paint off your brush, since folks ask all the time, just start jabbing it lightly against the bottom of the legs. You know, how do you do dust effects? Real fast and easy. Just use your basing color. And then the same thing with the second color. You can be a little more sparing with this, or you can go even heavier with it if you want a drier, lighter finish. And there at last, our Iron Warrior is complete. Now there's nothing to say that you couldn't start from a black or even a silver primer if you wanted a cooler, more mechanical finish to him. But I think starting from a brown gives us a really nice warmth and a texture to that silver, which works really well for our Legion. Of course, if you wanted to paint these guys more quickly, it's probably worth looking if you can find any uh, hazard stripe decal sheets. They are out there. The Mighty Brush comes to mind as one source of those, but hand painting them is not too difficult. And putting them in random spots, even on the bolter casing, will look quite cool. You can have a lot of fun with that. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.